Yes, I was told two different stories, and I'm trying to find out what's the meaning behind this. But one was when I was in the 11th grade, my English teacher had told me a story about her elderly father lived with her, and he had ended up passing on. Well, he had this rocking chair that he always sat in. After he was gone, that rocking chair would start rocking at night, and she said that she would holler, Daddy, stop, and the rocking chair would stop. But then today, I heard, I heard another story from a guy at work that told me about family land. They had a man, this was way back, had lived on this property, formed it, and the house burned down with him in it. He died. And he asked if he can move on that property for a short period of time. And she told him yes, but there were strange things that happened on that property and not to be alarmed by it. Well, he had moved on it. And then one night he was out there bush hogging and he heard something holler. Hey, he had earbuds in, so he wasn't quite sure what he had heard. So he had stopped the tractor, pulled his earbuds out, and he listened. He didn't hear anything. Well, he started back again. He he said he heard hey again. So he stopped and he killed the tractor. And he hollered, hey, back. Is there anybody out there? And he heard nothing. Well, when he reached down, he's like, maybe I'm just losing my mind. So when he reached down to start the tractor back up, uh, he heard the voice again say, hey, what are you doing? And it scared him so bad that he cranked the tractor up, turned around, and went back to the house. The next day, he hmm. called the lady that gave him the permission to be on the property and told her, that he had had an experience and what had happened. And she told him, you were fixing to get in an accident and something bad was fixing to happen. She said that that's happened to other people that's been on that property. Come to find out, he went back out there to where he was bush hawking and not far in front of him, he found a pile of rebar and other material that he would have ran over. So I'm curious, so is there any truth to this story? It, who are these people? Are they family? Okay, uh, there's a tremendous interest in supernatural in our day. Uh, witchcraft is proliferating. I read recently a uh, lot of interest in UFOs and so on and so forth. Um, our authority and our ultimate source for truth is the word of God. Um, thy word is truth. And so we go to the word of God, because when we're talking about ghosts, we remember the story of Jesus walking to the disciples on the water, and it says they cried out, uh, thinking that they had seen a ghost, and uh, the Greek word phantasm, and uh, they, they thought they had seen a ghost, but it was actually the Lord Jesus. Now, the only other mention of something like that is in the story of Saul, when Saul was totally backslidden and about to die he went to the witch at endor and he asked for her to conjure up samuel well she did and the bible tells us that samuel appeared and spoke to saul now we read that story and we got to think of two things one uh it doesn't say samuel was a ghost a phantasm it doesn't say that uh, this was a total exception. There's no other place in the Bible where uh, you find somebody dying and their soul wandering around. The typical kind of stuff we hear is uh, the person that died had un unfinished business on earth and, you know, something needs to be made right or, uh, you know, they're going to haunt somebody until that person makes something right. And so there, there's a vengeance factor and that kind of thing when we hear ghost stories. Uh, but none of that is found in the Bible, not any of it. The only situation, again, is when the spirit, the spirit of Samuel apparently appeared to Saul. Whether or not the spirit was conjured actually by a witch is, is unknown. We just know that he appeared, and he, and he accurately predicted the death of Saul. Uh, so I, I would be very careful with anything like this because my particular take is a lot of times this is demon spirits. 
I also believe this about UFOs. I believe the devil is a, a deceiver. His, his uh, modus operandi is to deceive. It is to fool people. It is to uh, put on a mask. It is to mask his true identity. And I think that a lot of times these ghosts are actually Satan tormenting people. I think you got to be so very careful. Ouija boards, this kind of thing, seances. People believe they've actually called up the souls of dead people. But no, you have actually called up demon spirits. You've opened a spirit door uh, to the, the black arts, to the dark world of Satanism. And I think you're actually encountering demons. Uh, your thoughts, Jerry? Yeah, you know, in the scriptures, we call it's known as necromancy, and it is the conjuring up of spirits. And whether you conjure them up or you believe in them, you know, departed spirits, uh, uh, spirits of departed people, it's wrong according to the scriptures in Leviticus 19, Deuteronomy 18, Galatians chapter 5, as well as Acts chapter 19, verse 19. And it's not something we want to get involved in. Before I was saved, I got involved in the New Age, and I was dealing with uh, uh, various auras as well as uh, 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 channeling, as well as also involved with Ouija boards, as you just mentioned, Jeff. And uh, yeah, the Ouija board spoke to my sister and I that we were in touch with an uncle and so on and so forth. And information was given, which was to confirm that. But truly, it was a demon. Now that I'm a Christian, I became a Christian, I realized I was in touch with demons. And demons are great imposters. They're counterfeiters. And they try to get your uh, your confidence. They try to lead you and guide you to your own personal uh, deceptions and self-destructions. And it's important for us not to get involved in those things and not to believe uh, stories about rocking chairs or stories about this uh, this field and all these different things. We all can imagine many, many things, and and I'm not trying to disprove, uh, dis, dishearten people about what's going on, but you know it's important for us to trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and Him only. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. And we're never to be calling on anyone from the dead or, or imagining that there are, uh, there are spirit wandering in, in some kind of nebulous space in the atmosphere, and they're just waiting to kind of visit with us and so forth. Those are demons. The Bible says, once you die, then comes the judgment. And either people today, either people are going to heaven as a born-again believer in Jesus Christ, or they're going to the place of Hades, waiting for the final judgment to be cast into the lake of fire. And they're not going to be wandering spirits. And this is Bible, what I'm sharing with you, as Jeff has also. And so we just want to encourage you to stay in the Word of God, uh, and we're here to help you grow in, in the faith, but to know that the truth of God's word is the final authority and not what people might imagine or think or stories they may share. It's important that we realize this is what the Bible says. And there's tremendous demonic warfare out there trying to deceive the whole world from believers to non-believers. So hopefully that'll bless your heart, my friend. Jeff? Yeah, Scott, uh, I, I, we're not in any way saying your, your friends didn't tell a true story. Uh, this, this happened. I'm, I'm not casting doubt on that. But what we are saying is you need to consider the source because the source is not the departed soul. You stop and think about if you really believe that, what effect would it have? Well, it would make you fearful. It would make me fearful if I thought, you know, somebody's departed spirit was uh, walking around in my house. Uh, that would not give me a warm fuzzy. That would not uh, give me peace. And so you, you stop and think, what does the devil want to do? He wants us in a spirit of fear. He wants us uh, nervous. He wants us on edge. And that's what this would do. So not questioning the stories of your friends, only the source that they're attributing it to. I hope that helps.